Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week. An armed suspect was killed by police on Sunday after he opened fire during an outdoor Christmas concert at the Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine in Harlem. According to the NYPD, the incident occurred just before 4 p.m. when the man yelled, kill me, before firing several shots just outside the doors of the church. Multiple officers responded to the scene quickly, firing several rounds back at the suspect, one of which struck him in the head. He was taken to hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Police say they found a bag at the scene that they believed belonged to the suspect. It contained a can of gasoline, rope, wire, multiple knives, a Bible, and tape. It is not currently known what motivated the shooting. Thankfully, it appears that no one other than the suspect was seriously injured as a result of the shooting. On Sunday morning, police in Kanawha County, West Virginia, responded to a 911 call about an apparent triple homicide at a home in Elkview. The caller was a family member of the residents and had gone to check on them after failing to hear from the relatives for several days. When they arrived, they discovered the door unlocked only to enter and find the violent scene. When police arrived to investigate, they discovered that there were actually four dead bodies. According to reports, the victims are all family members, consisting of an adult man and woman and two boys, aged 3 and 12. A fifth family member, whose name has not been released because they're a juvenile, has been charged with the murders. They have been safely relocated at this time. Two inmates are back in police custody after authorities say they escaped from a minimum security prison in Tennessee. 36-year-old Robert Lee Brown and 34-year-old Christopher Osteen escaped from the Northwest Correctional Complex in Tiptonville on Friday, initiating a manhunt. A pair of fugitives were spotted within an hour of their escape, shortly before they kidnapped a Kentucky Highway Department employee and stole his truck. Both the truck and the employee were located several hours later. Brown and Osteen then stole another vehicle, leaving the owner tied up in his residence. The vehicle was recovered shortly before the men were caught. Brown and Osteen were arrested just an hour apart on Sunday in Pompano Beach, Florida. The location is approximately 1,100 miles away from where the convicts had escaped two days prior. A holiday-themed anti-shoplifting program in Riverside, California resulted in the bizarre arrest of two suspected car thieves on Thursday with two of the officers involved, dressed as Santa and an elf. The officers were undercover as part of an operation called Santa's Intervention, an enforcement program put on by the Riverside Police Department targeting shoplifters. The officers got word that three suspects appear to be casing cars to steal in a nearby parking lot. Though one of the suspects managed to get away in a stolen vehicle, two others were arrested at the scene. Part of the incident was caught on video, with the elf holding one of the men at gunpoint, while the Santa could be seen wrestling the other to the ground. In the footage, someone can be heard yelling, get him Santa, in the background. The stolen vehicle was later found abandoned, and police are still on the lookout for the third suspect. A strange incident unfolded at McCarran Airport in Las Vegas on Saturday afternoon when a man climbed onto one of the wings of an Alaskan Airlines jet. According to reports, the plane was bound for Portland and was preparing for takeoff when the man approached it on the tarmac and began to climb it. It is believed he gained access to the restricted area by climbing over a fence. A portion of the ordeal was captured by one of the jet's passengers. In it, the man can be seen attempting to climb even higher on a segment of the aircraft's wing, even throwing away his shoes and socks in what appears to be an attempt to improve his grip. When the man is approached by two police officers on the wing, he appears to lose his grip, falling and hitting his head on the pavement below. The man was later arrested. Police believe that either intoxication or mental illness is to blame for the incident. Police in Colorado Springs say that DNA evidence has finally cracked the 21-year-old cold case murder of Jennifer Watkins. In November of 1999, 23-year-old Watkins disappeared near the end of her shift while working as a dietary aide at Memorial Hospital. Several days later, her body was found abandoned in a stairwell wrapped in plastic and duct tape. She had been sexually assaulted before her death. The recent breakthrough in the case is thanks to the use of forensic genealogy techniques that have helped solve several similar cold cases in the past two to three years. 
The technique utilizes information uploaded to public genealogy websites to connect unknown DNA samples to existing genetic profiles. Watkins Killer has been identified as Ricky Sievert, a man who worked in the hospital's maintenance department at the time of the murder. Unfortunately, it is too late to force Sievert to answer for his crime, as he was killed in a car accident just two years after he murdered Watkins. Still, the information finally provides closure to those affected by the case, including for Watkins' husband, who was initially considered a suspect in her death. A Gainesville, Georgia woman who was hospitalized with stab wounds this week has been charged with the murders of her two young children. Police say that they received a 911 call shortly after 2 p.m. on Friday that a woman had cut herself. When they arrived, they found 26-year-old Bernice Jaramillo Hernandez suffering from knife wounds, as well as the bodies of her five and six-year-old children. Hernandez apparently murdered the two children before attempting to take her own life. She is now facing two counts each of felony murder, malice murder, and aggravated assault. A major new development was announced this week in possibly the most famous unsolved serial killer case in American history. It was reported that after 51 years, the Zodiac Killer's infamous 340 cipher has been cracked. The cipher was one of four sent by the killer and was received by the newspaper The San Francisco Chronicle in 1969. It is named for the number of characters it contains. The message was cracked by an international team of codebreakers, featuring Australian software engineer Sam Blake, American cryptographer David Orenchek, and Belgian software engineer Jarl Van. In the eerie translation, the Zodiac Killer claims he is not afraid of the gas chamber, saying his victims will work as slaves for him once he reaches paradise. It also references a talk show that had occurred days before the cipher was sent, where someone had called in claiming to be the killer. The cipher claims that the call was fake, though this had already long been known by police. Though the finding is certainly exciting, it remains to be seen whether the cracked cipher will offer any substantially new evidence to the case. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.